Go up the rapid. No, yeah, we got it. Oh, look at the size of this box. It's gonna be epic. It's Probo's new 24 inch jet stream and I'm really amped to go out and run it. But first we gotta talk about its features. It's got this armor plated underside. Jet thruster with reverse gate so you can do some tricks. They even have a Blake Wilkie driver figure and lots of LED lights. Man, look at this thing. It's just oozing with coolness. I've got the Blake Wilkie Mini Boat Mafia replica here and the shreddy logos on it, XCOM tires, heat wave sunglasses, awesome looking boat. The graphics are killer. It's got the roll cage on top. It's got speakers out back. And I've heard rumors that people are actually gonna put speakers in there so they can blare some tunes while they're driving this thing. An LED light bar up front, it's absolutely blinding. And then they got the flashing lights in the rear. The hull itself is a really thick ABS. I mean, there is no flex to this. And that's because this thing is gonna be hitting rocks and jumps that you're gonna encounter in the water. And then you gotta check out the bottom because they've got this armor plate. This is like a composite plastic and it's screwed to the bottom of the hull. And then the edges too are also a strip of composite screwed in place so you could go and replace those if necessary. But uh, they're gonna offer that nice sharp line there. This is gonna offer some durability when you're hitting stuff. And then as we move back, you can see the intake area that is a separate piece and they've got metal bars that run through it. So nothing really gets in there and doesn't break off as you're hitting stuff. But this is your impeller inlet that's gonna suck the water in and you could go in water as shallow as just two inches from what I've read, which is really cool and from what i saw they're going to also have a stainless steel option plate in case you're getting really gnarly with this thing but back up to the top let's just take a closer look at some of the other features that they have some of the details this shreddy logo right here is actually printed on foam and then adhered to the bow and then the rear hatch plate is also foam with the shreddy logo on it the wicked logo here that's printed on foam as well just so awesome all the details then the blake wilkie figure he's got separate arm pieces it looks like his hat and hair may be separate as well it's form kind of like a pilot figure that we've seen in so many airplanes. Finally cool that we're getting some realistic figures into the surface world. He's got hard composite seats and steering wheel in there. Just a few gauges which are decals, but it makes it look realistic. Now we can start talking about some of the hardware and out back we've got trim tabs with the uh, adjustable hardware, all stainless steel screws throughout. And there's a jet thruster for steering. It's got a tie rod that comes out of the uh, hole. It's got a rubber boot to help protect it from any water getting inside. And then it's got this reverse gate, which is actually actuated by a servo inside. So this will allow you to drop the reverse gate down and give it some reverse thrust so you can do some wild tricks with it. It's got this extra tie rod over here that looks like maybe in the future you'll be able to adjust the pitch of the jet. I'm, I'm kind of interested in that. And then you can see the water cooling tube. This uh, will cool the speed controller and the motor and actually the motor mount inside. And once it goes through everything on the inside, the water actually ejects out of this port over here. Now let's pop the hatch. This is just held in with magnets. That's pretty cool. Although I probably would have liked to have seen a little bit of foam attached to that just in case. And there is the business end of the boat. Check out all the goodies inside. I've already installed the battery so I could show you how cool this battery mount system is in just a minute. But here in the center, you've got a module which uh, secures the motor mount assembly and then some of your electronics. It's got an aluminum coupler that goes to the straight shaft to the impeller. And then it's really just talking about the electronics. So this is a Spectrum 100 amp speed controller. As you can see, it's water cooled as I mentioned before goes over to the 1600 kV brushless motor. That's got the water cooling jacket on it. And then you've got your Spectrum standard servos. And then located over on the side in the back underneath this cover is your receiver. And they've got two switches for turning it on and turning on your LEDs. And finally, let me show you the battery mounting system. So number one, I like that they have a hard mount for the connector. So this thing isn't wobbling around. And then the battery itself is secured to a plate with Velcro straps. And it's a plate that can easily be removed. So you just just pull up on this little tab, slide back, and your whole battery comes out just like that. And they give you an extra one of these in the box so you could have two battery packs ready to go with Velcro straps. And it even has a little magnet to help secure that uh, tab in place so it doesn't pop out when you're driving around. It comes with a Spectrum SLT3 radio system, which is cool. The third channel controls that reverse gate. You'll find an instruction manual in the box as well as a lanyard and a pro boat decal. Now it's time to go hit the rapids. So the pro boat guys told me to find a place really gnarly to go and run this bow, and I think I found it. This is the spot where I usually take some crawlers, but we just had a ton of rain here, and the rapids are looking pretty wild. This should be good. This thing is so awesome. Look at that. 
Those rapids are pretty gnarly. The current is intense. And this thing is so cool. I love how it just rotates. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> pops up and out. See if we can spin it out there, yeah. Now once that intake jumps out of the water, it's gonna take about a second for it to recover. I mean, that's to be expected, but it's fast, oh man. It does about 20 miles an hour. I don't have a GNSS on me, but that's what they say on the box. And for this, this is absolutely perfect. Here we go, guys. The gnarly stuff. Look at this. fighting it that is some nasty current look at that <laughs> go up the rapid no yeah we got it oh it went under and we recover this boat is so stable boom oh under the water again guys my heart is going so fast right now this is pure adrenaline. Water shooting out the back. Yeah, oh man. This is so awesome, pro boat. This is what we needed in the RC boat world. As you guys probably already figured out, driving the jet stream is absolutely incredible. It's an all new level of fun with an RC boat, just going through the rapids, doing donuts, skidding out on top of the water. It is so cool. That area of the river I was running in was a, a bit on the extreme side. We just had a ton of rain and actually about an eighth mile up from where I was running is a dam. And so the water pressure from there was absolutely intense and this boat was able to power upstream. So I think it's got some decent power to it. I like a little bit more to have a lot more fun with tricks and stuff. Yes, everybody wants a little bit more power, but I think it's actually powered very well. Now it's time to talk about things you need to look out for, things that I encountered with the bow, and one of them is obviously rocks. You're gonna be hitting rocks with this thing. And so far, it seems to be pretty tough. I smashed the front of it really hard. It didn't crack the hull at all, but it's got a nasty gouge in the side of the plastic. And then uh, while I was doing uh, spin outs, I hit the rear against a rock and it separated the plastic a little bit, but it didn't really mash it up too bad. It did, however, bend the aluminum tie rod for the trim tab. Uh, so it would be nice if they made those out of like a stainless steel or something. Hopefully there's an option part coming out to go and fix that and just let the plastic flex on its own rather than the aluminum rod bending. But that's about the worst of it. I did get some water inside the boat and I noticed that there are some little wavy gaps on the lower plastic center section here and maybe the water is getting in through there. It's not too bad and it does have a drain plug so I just drained it out. And I went through all four battery packs that I brought with me. That's how much fun I was having. The only thing is it doesn't have the battery meter on top of the radio like the DX3 does. So I was just bringing the boat in when I thought it was getting towards the end of the battery pack. It's, again, those rapids were really gnarly. I didn't want it just floating off on its own. And, and side note, what I actually did was I put an Apple AirTag in there just in case it did go downstream. Obviously, if you're driving this thing in the river, you need to be ultra careful. You don't want to go in after it. So, you know, I threw an AirTag in and I had to find it. That was going to be my means of locating it. I would recommend this boat if you're going to drive it in the lake. It really needs, you know, like a river type setting stream. 
and that's where you're gonna have the most fun with it. And overall, I think ProBud just checked all the boxes. They have an incredible release here. And the only thing we need now is we need Axial to make a trailer for this thing so we can tow it behind an SDX6.